Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the um, Mid-South Wrestling Review Series. August 21st, 1982 is our episode for the moment and uh, some notable stuff on here. We begin to move in a different storyline direction. Kevin Von Erich, odd member here, uh, but they're trying to give him more of a worldwide feel, I guess. Um, anyway... He's up with Billy Starr in the opening contest of this week's program. I don't know that he ever comes through again. Maybe later, but not. Uh, I don't think he comes through again in 82. At least not um, that I recall. And I've watched all of 82 at this point. hope to have all of 82 done by Tuesday. Although Tuesdays are busy with Dark and Impact as well. And also my various other jobs. This literally is... One of those days where I had a client who um, gave me a Christmas bonus that allowed me to take a much-needed day off, and I used that uh, to catch up on Mid-South. So that's a kind of a weird thing to do, but that's what wrestling fans do, uh, and people who want to be in the business as promoters someday, too. Of course, if COVID behaves. Anyway, um, interesting robe from Von Erich. Of course, Von Erich, the one... Uh, of the top three brothers, Carrie, David, and Kevin, and um, of the Von Erich uh, second generation. Anyway, uh, Arm Ringer Takeover by Kevin Von Erich. If you haven't already, 340 uh, editions deep of the um, World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series, much like we're doing here, at week by week, episode by episode, everything that was on the network available there. I didn't find much outside of the network stuff uh, available, like on YouTube or, or other file sharing sites. Otherwise, I would have added that in too. Anyway, um, Trip Up and a Leg Grapevine by Von Eric, who, for his for his time, is very aggressive. Uh, Billy Star uh, manages to tie up in the ropes. Interesting that we didn't see Star in Texas after this. I don't remember seeing him anyway. I think this is the first time I've seen him. Nice dropkick by Von Erich, who always wrestles barefoot, which is always kind of interesting and bizarre. Anyway, Star, though, seems like he would have fit in quite well in world class at the time or at any time before the end of the promotion. Don't know where he goes after here. I don't think I've seen him before. Maybe I'll see him in my forays into other territories. Anyway, body slam and a big splash by Kevin Von Erich, one, two, and three, winning with a big splash uh, uh, from a smaller guy. Kind of weird, but anyway, Ted uh, DiBiase and Jim Duggan versus JYD and Mr. Olympia. Um, they want the Duggan and uh, DiBiase wanting the tag team championships. And I believe they were held at this point by uh, the tandem of Olympia and Dog. Um, although they don't seem to be coming out. Yep, they do seem to be coming out with them, so uh, they are there, and Dog seems to always wear his uh, championship belt backwards. I guess that's something I never noticed before, although uh, I think this is the first territory that I've seen that the Junkyard Dog have a championship in. I have not seen much of Calgary. I'd like to see more of Calgary, but I don't think a terrible amount of it is available on video, and they clipped the heck out of the shows they did do uh, over the years, so um, I might not have been able to see Dog with um, with uh, stuff in that in that vein, anyway, um, big slam on Duggan. I never knew that I would want to see the Junkyard Dog and Hacksaw Jim Duggan in matches with each other. Didn't get to see it in the World Wrestling Federation. Didn't see it in WCW either. But now that I've seen it, I'm actually intrigued by it in a weird sort of way. Uh, Mr. Olympia makes his way into the ring. Olympia gets thrown around a bit by Duggan, although. Uses some speed and hits some drop kicks. This is actually a very good match for pacing of a tag team match of a higher quality, higher echelon. Uh, tag teams not as big in Mid-South, at least in 82. They do become so in 83, 84 uh, with the midnight, Midnight's and Rock and Roll. And um, anyway, we'll get there when we get there. Uh... Hip toss, arm drags on DiBiase and Olympia really cleaning house on the North American champion. Uh, tie up by Duggan and uh, Dog. Duggan with a vicious forearm out of nowhere 
on the dog and takes the dog down with that one blow, for sign that we, no matter who you are, you can go down with one good shot. And I've always preferred the one good shot over seven or eight uh, mixed martial arts shots, that kind of stuff. Just goofy, really, really goofy. Um, when you when you when you're in a fight, anyone can, can get nailed one time or twice, and and go down. And I think when you have matches where guys get hit a whole bunch of times, it just it takes away from the realism. Tag off to the junkyard dog, dog uh, holding on to the arm of Duggan. Duggan, um, you know, not known for being a great seller. Short knee to the to the uh, kidney area by DiBiase. DiBiase now, uh, DiBiase and Duggan in quick succession within less than a minute hits uh, two knees right to the bridge of the nose of the junkyard dog. Dog and um, Olympia cut off from each other. Meanwhile, DiBiase and Duggan making hot tags. I would say this is one of the Mid-South matches that is really worth going out of your way to see if you haven't. And usually when I give those recommendations, it's because the psychology and the intensity of the match still holds up all these years later. Anyway, brawling in the middle of the ring, all four guys in there and um, neither team really getting that much of an advantage however the heels are, are run together the old run together spot DiBiase uh, manages to catch himself on the receiving end of a atomic drop and then runs himself into the into the buckle uh, the referee loses control DiBiase and uh, uh, Duggan cut the ring off on Mr. Olympia. Doug sent Doug sent to the outside in the in the meantime. Duggan prancing around on the ringside apron after a power slam by DiBiase, and DiBiase has the uh, figure four on. Duggan comes in to try and break that up, and successfully does. Uh, DiBiase is not happy with this. Uh, he's sent into the ropes in a big thump power slam by the Junkyard Dog 1, 2, and 3. Uh, DiBiase pinned by the dog in the middle, so that, in theory, would make Junkyard Dog the number one contender to the uh, tag team, or the uh, North American Championship, at least in theory. Uh, Dick Murdoch and Tug Taylor up next. We'll talk about dropping, uh, talk about dropping down a little bit there. Um, as, uh, you know, kind of an, certainly an enhancement match after what we've just seen. So I don't know about the television placing of that particular match. If I'm, if I'm putting that on, I might uh, have saved that for the main event or a final television slot. Although maybe if you're trying to get people to change channels, it works. But in the time when, uh, before major cable access, you kind of only had four or five, maybe at most ten channels in your market. Uh, and that's, those are extreme markets. But anyway... Uh, Dick Murdoch with the side headlock takeover stays on his adversary and uh, gets some ride time on, on good Tug Taylor there. Um, and uh, top of the head uh, with the elbow smash and, and the like. And again, you kind of see um, kind of see some shots and uh, Taylor manages to try and come out the back door. Uh, he's a bit of a, a brawler, doesn't really find his way. I don't really remember seeing him do a lot of really amazing stuff until, well, not even that that was amazing, but uh, more high-profile stuff until Global. A big drop kick out of nowhere from uh, Big Dick Murdoch, which is kind of weird to see him leave his feet, not typical, but uh, he hits the Brain Buster and gets the victory. Uh, we go to Killer Khan up next. Killer Khan is in a... Oddly enough, a championship match here. Um, Khan is, I believe, the yep, the Louisiana Louisiana champion. Um, let me just double check that. Yep, Louisiana champion. Um, although he doesn't seem to hold it very long, so remember other people challenging for it that were not those individuals. Um, and meaning more towards this time of the ye of, the, of the year, uh, we also do see another return debut uh, again here, but we'll get there in a minute. Uh, Skandar Akbar very happy with his investment in Killer Khan. Um, also imagine Mike uh, Mike Sharp challenging for a championship 
Uh, he does have a couple of matches with Backlund. I think he had one or two at the, at the Garden with Bob Backlund in the same year. Well, maybe not the same year because he's been pretty well here in 82. Maybe he was 81 that he had those challenges. Or maybe he was traveling back and forth to the Garden. I don't really know. But anyway, uh, around the same time, he was challenging Bob Backlund a couple times at the Garden up in New York. And um, uh, Killer Khan managing to hold the hair. Um, front face lock by Khan. And he's cranking on it for a little bit there. Um, sharp. Tries to come out the back door, has a little bit of difficulty. Of course, the size differential, he should have difficulty coming out the back door on a guy like um, Killer Khan. But anyway, uh, holds on to the arm for a good bit of time and uh, kicks along the way and uh, steps on the on the uh, ankle and works over the ankle, does Khan, of uh, his adversary there for a minute um, and uh, works that for a couple of minutes. Meanwhile... Um, I don't know exactly what the weapon is that, uh, uh, Akbar has on the outside, but he does have it. Uh, I always want to say an umbrella, but I can't imagine he would have an umbrella. That doesn't make much sense. Anyway, he does have it. It's in the, in the bottom of your screen there for a couple of minutes. Um, oddly enough, Iron Mike Sharp stomp, stomping on the hand of his adversary. Um, and, you know, we kind of go forward here, uh, Hard shot to the midsection by Sharp. Sharp actually looking competitive against Killer Khan. Of course, they have uh, had some wars in the previous week, and I'm sure weeks, and, and I'm sure doing a good bit of uh, battle with each other on house shows as well. Um, distraction by Akbar. Akbar uh, enables that distraction, enables. Uh, uh, Killer Khan to get up and hit the um, the the second rope knee drop goes for the pile driver doesn't get it though Mike Sharp having uh, enough leverage or presence of mind or both to uh, send his adversary over again we see uh, Sharp bring uh, Akbar into the ring Akbar is enough of a distraction that Killer Khan manages to hook uh, Mike Sharp up, and um, really, Akbar goes quite to town. Uh, meanwhile, Buck, Buck Robley makes his way out uh, and causes a, a bit of a, I don't know that I'd say a distraction. Mike Sharp gets, gets a victory here. I don't know if there was a disqualification first, but um, anyway, Killer Khan not happy with that. We see the return of Mr. Wrestling 2 to the area against Mike Bond. Mr. Wrestling 2 has been through Mid-South a couple of years before this. And, uh, of course, he is a major deal in Georgia where he uh, did the majority of his wrestling. But uh, he does an angle here that plays out over the next several months, which I'm sure we're going to cover. And um, uh, Bond manages to fight with him, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him a little bit. Forearms and the like, of course, Mr. Wrestling 2, mainly known for his knee lift in the area, and, um, uh, you know, stays on the arm, hooks him, and, and keeps on that arm for the next few minutes, and we kind of see uh, Mr. Wrestling 2 hang on the arm for a couple of minutes there, um, and then as we, as we move forward, um, Wrestling 2 not to... Uh, Willing to take much of a backward step, as well he should not be. And uh, um, he does get the victory with the knee lift, of course. I think he just about beat everyone with that knee lift in the South uh, at one point or another uh, because the, the Mr. Wrestling deal was quite a big deal for quite a while uh, in this time frame. Anyway, uh, we move to a match with um, Buck Robley and... Skandor Akbar, and that is obviously a bit of a uh, finish because of the involvement with Mike Sharp earlier, but also uh, one man gang out here as well. Uh, they're kind of highlighting that deal, and Akbar basically says he wants Robley, and he's going to get him. Uh, this kind of intensifies the feud there. Uh, I guess you're gonna have if you're gonna have Robley, Robley around for an extended period of time, and they have. 
I gotta find something for him to do. Uh, so Robley and Akbar do go at it. Um, that's kind of where it leads, and, and Akbar carries on for quite a bit before that match actually begins. They only need a few minutes, and that's good, because that's all they have. Um, believe it or not, uh, Akbar takes over on Robley for the first few minutes, uh, showing more wrestling acclimate than the average person would think a manager has. Uh, one man gang stays out there and uh, certainly leads and lends his expertise to to issues. Um, uh, amazingly, Akbar trying to load his hand with fire, tries to throw a fireball, but gets a drop kick back in his own face. Uh, they do not do a um, a you know burn angle there; just kind of backfires on him. Meanwhile, Khan and uh, One Man Gang and Akbar all double and triple teaming uh, everybody, and I um, uh, believe it is. I know Mr. Wrestling 2 is out there. I'm pretty sure uh, that... Oh, it's Dick Murdoch. Okay. Uh, I, I hadn't written... I, I just wrote question mark, which was stupid of me. But Dick Murdoch makes his way out. Um, meanwhile, Duggan and DiBiase are closing things out for this week. They are dissatisfied. They want the tag team championships. They believe that they have been wronged. Um, they want more gold, and they are... Um, not going to be satisfied until they get it, and they put challenges out. Uh, DiBiase having the North American Championship, obviously not enough for him at this point. Would have been at a point, but was not now. And so we are going to continue uh, with more action right after this. <laughs> 